Okay guys, I'm really sorry that it's taken so long to get up. I've tried recording it twice and I was having issues. These are going to be five minute video clips each, so there may be more than one, but just check into the next video when you're done. Overall, we're going to talk about the cell membrane. From the cell campaign or the organelle campaign, you should have realized that the cell membrane has two major functions. And that's creating a boundary between the inside and outside of the cell and regulating the passage of materials into and out of the cell. It does this with a bunch of different components. So we need to take a look at all of these. As we look, we should see things that seem familiar, like the fact that we have phospholipids here, the fact that we are going to have carbohydrates and proteins. The lipids, again, should sound familiar from our biochemistry unit. Now, when we take a closer look at all of this, the major portion of the cell membrane is made out of a phospholipid bilayer, meaning that it has two different layers of phospholipids. Here we see layer number one is going to be right here, and layer number two is right there. Within these layers, we are going to see that there are hydrophilic parts, which mean that it loves water, and there are hydrophobic parts, which means that it fears water or um, does not mix with water. The hydrophilic part are these heads on the top and these heads on the bottom. The hydrophobic part is all of this interior portion. Okay. When we look at a phospholipid in and of itself, some of these portions should sound familiar from our biochem unit. Down at the bottom, we have two um, carbon-hydrogen chains. The carbon-hydrogen chains create those fatty acids. Then, there's a glycerol right here that's going to attach the two fatty acids together. Attached to the glycerol will be a phosphate group and then a polar group. The polar group, the phosphate group, and the glycerol all combine to create the polar head to the actual phospholipid. Then the two fatty acid chains are going to be the hydrophobic part or the nonpolar portion. When the polar or when the phospholipids combine into the, be the two layers, you will notice that all of the uh, fatty acid chains line up down here with the two hydrophilic parts on the outside. Now when we take a look at the picture of the cell membrane, here is one phospholipid. You can see the phosphate group and the two fatty acids. But you're also going to see a lot more. There are sterols. In animal cells, the sterile that is used, it's just another type of fat, is cholesterol. And then there's a bunch of different types of proteins. There are going to be marker proteins, receptor proteins, transporting proteins, enzymes, and anchoring proteins. The proteins can be integral, which is like this. They go all the way through the cell membrane. Or they can be peripheral, which is going to be um, just partway through the cell membrane. These yellow portions are going to represent the cholesterols. So most of the time the proteins are going to be these big purple blobs that are going through and the cholesterol are the little yellow hexagons. Those are going to be the lipids. Now, what is the purpose of all these parts? First off, we should kind of realize that the cell membrane is what we call fluid mosaic model, meaning all the parts put together, but it's fluid. It is going to be constantly moving, not static. The proteins don't stay where they are. They are going to move throughout the actual cell membrane. Um, the reason that they need to move is to go and send different parts of the cell the different signals. The cholesterol's main purpose is to make sure that the cell membrane remains somewhat firm. If it is too loose or too fluid, the membrane could fall apart. So the cholesterol keeps the membrane firm and prevents it from freezing. However, if you end up with too much cholesterol in your cell membrane, the cell membrane would be too firm and it would prevent that movement. All right, guys, I'm going to end this first video right now. The next video is going to go through and detail the different types of proteins that are found in the cell membrane with all of their purposes.